Hi, sir. Hi, Ami. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very good, thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, we have been in inequalities. I thought we'll discuss um, absolute function inequalities today with you. All right. Mm -hmm. right. So, yeah. Otherwise, have you understood everything about inequalities so far? Yeah, um, I had this, uh, you know, the exam review at the back of my book. Yeah. Um, out of the 45, I only didn't know one. So that was quite good. <laughs> you mean you did 44 yeah. out of 45 from all what you've done so far? Yeah. All that's right. quite impressive. We only did like three lessons. Yeah, was yeah, it? that's great. That's great, great. Yeah. That's great, great. But today's topic, which I'm going to cover, is from your year 13 curriculum. So I thought when we are right. touched upon this particular area, why not just go full-fledged and even do things which are not covered in your year 12. Uh, but with that, we'll kind of wind up. So that should be good. And uh, if you are doing so strongly, I recommend if you can get hold of year 13 book, you can do inequalities from there. So that could be All challenging right. and interesting, okay? So that's great. So whatever question you didn't get, send it over so that we can discuss that also. Okay. So let me share with you this screen, which I have. Uh... Okay. That is about inequalities with absolute functions. So how familiar are you with absolute functions? Um, so we did a bit um, in like functions and when we were doing graphs and things. I but... see not that much in depth obviously i know it's the um v shape okay when the negative side flips but then other than that and we came across it in piecewise functions as well but then okay. yeah that's it so uh, don't worry so we'll get into a length of understanding that part also while solving inequalities so i kept that in mind while you know because this is not a part of your year 12 curriculum and therefore i knew there are some areas which needs more explanation so we'll spend some time there no worries okay so these are the topics which i'm going to cover today we'll start with basic definition of what modulus or absolute function is so many times we refer to this as the modulus or mod where we are only reflecting to a positive outcome right so absolute value of anything which will be a number is always a positive mm -hmm. number right so if i say what is the absolute value of minus two it is going to be plus two. Now, one of the major advantages and applications of absolute function is, think like this, whenever we are doing some activity, we have a tolerance level, right? If we manufacture something, we have some specifications. And in every right. specification, there's a tolerance. We say, well, when you're talking about dimensions, plus or minus one millimeter will work for you for that particular application. So mm -hmm. plus or minus means it could be more or less but just by one unit. That's what they're trying to say. So we say absolute value should be less than one. So it covers for both. Uh -huh. That's the whole idea. So keep that in mind while going through this uh, uh, chapter today. Then we'll look All into right. some rules of absolute functions clearly laid out so that you, you know, you'll just understand. And we'll begin with very simple inequalities. So I love that term, simple inequalities. And then we'll kind of complicate them with some transformations. So easiest is definitely a translation left or right. And then we'll do stretch uh, vertical. And then we'll introduce you to two absolute functions. And then we'll have something more interesting. Uh, writing inequalities from the absolute value will provide you a solution. For example, here you see a number line, right? This is a number line. Mm -hmm. And I'm providing you a solution that the inequality solution is something which is less than one, but greater than five. That means you could write that the inequality is less than one union greater than five. What would be the absolute function to describe this particular uh, inequality? That could be one of your questions in the test itself. Mm -hmm. uh, it will remain as your test question. And I, at the end of the session, I'd like you to answer this, okay? So try to understand okay. the concept so that you can actually answer this. I haven't really answered this in my text. Then we'll talk about combining absolute functions with linear functions, and then we'll add polynomials to it to make it really complicated. So that is where the exam type questions come in and your year 13, you'll definitely get at least one question from this particular topic. Okay, and it's right. certainly worth more than five marks. Okay, so let's begin with 
the basic definition. So I have written a function which is absolute value of x minus a. Now a could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, any integer. It could be any real number for that matter, right? A could be anything, any real number. In that case, we define it as a piecewise function written there, which is kind of complicated, but let's try to understand the basic. Think about a line x minus a first. So we'll first only consider a line x minus a, okay? So if you have a line x minus a, considering a is positive, that means uh, this y intercept will be negative, right? Minus a. So if you draw that line, so that orange line which I'm showing here will be your graph. Okay, so that becomes the graph of your x minus a. Okay, now as I was saying, absolute value is always positive. It cannot be negative. So what should we do? We basically have to reflect it. So we reflect the negative part over there. As soon as you reflect, it is kind of a transformation, you know, reflection on x axis means mm -hmm. multiply by negative one, correct? So that is right. why you see this negative one here. Do you see this negative one here? Oh, okay. Yeah. So what we're trying to say now is, is I hope will be clear that if x is less than a, if x is on this side, less than a, the line is going below the x axis, it should be reflected. And then only it represents the absolute function, right? Um, so we make this minus here to reflect that straight line. So you get this V shape now. Got the idea. So that part, which was in quadrant three, now gets reflected. And you get that V. And this is what you get as a result. And that is the definition of absolute function. So as you can see very clearly, yeah. On the right. Yes, because I, I knew that you said previously an absolute function graph is like this. But then I didn't really understand why. I just memorized it like it was like that. Now it makes okay. sense. So yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So you see this part is exactly same. And therefore I'm saying when X is greater than or equal to A, then it is X minus A, just like the straight line. However, as soon mm -hmm. as it comes to the left side of that, in that case, it becomes negative. And therefore we have written negative within brackets X minus A for X less than A. Perfect. Now, yeah. one more question is there in the mind of uh, students many times. That is, at one place I have written x less than a, at the other place x greater than equal to a, correct? <laughs> now, see, think like this, that domain is all real numbers for a straight line. So this point a, you could consider either side. Just as we prefer to use zero as a positive number, we'll use this point on the positive side, right? Just a nomenclature, perfect? Yeah. Now, as we were talking about this, a value could be negative. In that case, the line will be something like this. However, the method doesn't really change. You reflect the part which is there on the negative side and you get your absolute function. Is that clear to you now? So, yeah. so these are your absolute functions. Let me write f, f of x as my absolute value, right? So which is positive, right? Always. So that is the basics. Now, well, have some simple routines, which will explain you a few more things uh, here. Since we are working with inequalities, we'll focus on inequalities also. So let me read what have I written about the absolute function. Piecewise positive function, where the negative part of the line is reflected on the x-axis at the vertex x equals to a. So once you reflect it, the vertex comes into picture. Before that wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So that point, is called the vertex. And you will also notice from here that if I draw a horizontal line, it will actually cross at two points, right? If it is mm -hmm. in quadrant going above the x-axis, but there is only one horizontal line, which is the x-axis, which cuts only at one point, and that is the vertex. So it's also a good point to remember that if you are trying to find points of intersection with a horizontal line, you expect two answers if the value of y is greater than zero, right? If it is zero, then you expect one answer, which is the vertex. Okay, so as we have seen here, minus, if, if it is a negative x, absolute value will be positive. 
For example, absolute value of minus five is absolute value of five, which is five. This is what I'm trying to say here. Now, a minus x, I could even write this as x minus a, but the absolute value is positive, so it doesn't really matter. So you could write either way. Sometimes in the oh, equations, okay. you know, it is better to write x first, right, than the other number. So it doesn't mm -hmm. matter in absolute value. You could always flip it. 7 minus 5 is same as 5 minus 7, right? Absolute value of 2 is 2, and absolute value of minus 2 is also 2, right? That is the reason. Right. Now, these steps are very important. Square of the absolute function is x squared, okay? You can see absolute function is not x. Absolute x is not x. Absolute x will be, depending on the leg, if it is on the left side of the vertex, then it is negative x. If it is on the right side of zero, the vertex, then it is the x value. However, when you square it, then it becomes both positive. So, yeah, so absolute value of x squared is x squared. And this is very, very important. Absolute value, I mean, square root of x squared is absolute value of x. That is also not x. equal to x, right? Yeah. Square root is That's always true. positive, right? Since we have, we have come across this so many times by now, right? So that is yeah. very good. So absolute value of minus 5 is plus 5. And square root always gives you a positive value. Square root will never give you a negative value. Perfect. That's right. kind of very important. If you are writing this, square root of x squared is equal to x is a huge mistake. Never do it. You know this. If I have minus 5 and if I square and then square root, I'm going to get 5, not minus 5, right? right. Simple as that. So don't make that mistake. There'll be a huge mistake while you're doing your test paper, maybe uh, year 12 or 13, whatever. Okay. Now, yes. As far as the inequalities are concerned, when I say that the absolute value of x is less than p, that means it is within. So we'll always use the word within that boundary. Now it is not equal to, so it is between plus and minus p. It is like a tolerance, right? So think like a tolerance. Oh. That'd be good. If it is greater than P, that means the piece has been kind of rejected, throw it out. So it is like going outside mm -hmm. that limit of P. This time I have used greater than equal to. So when you use equal to, you have to include the point, right? That is how it is. And or or union is, of course, there. Yeah, it could be either side, right? But greater than P. X minus A, when I say, is less than or equal to p, that means x minus a is between plus and minus p, correct? Oh, okay. The yeah. whole thing, whatever is there within this absolute function is within that particular limit. Of course, when you're solving inequalities, you can add a both sides and get your solution, correct? An easy solution. Mm -hmm. we'll start with these examples soon. And, you know, if it is greater than, then it is just as we did earlier, you know, outside, correct? So that is how it is. Perfect. Also remember, if I'm saying that the absolute value of A is equal to the absolute value of B, it does it mean A equals to B? No. It means A square equals to B square because A or B could have different signs. One could be positive, one could be negative. So that is also a multiple choice question. Absolute value of A equals to absolute value of B is A equals to B true or false. Simple question but 50% time, you get it wrong. A squared Wait, so, is squared, yes. Yeah, yes. so since it's squared, does that, it's just that the fact that it has to be positive? Square makes it positive. Because see, absolute value of A, let us take example, minus five, right? Is equal to, mm -hmm. five, correct? Now, if B yeah. is just five, so then absolute value of B is also five, right? But A yeah. is not equal to B since A is minus five and B is five. five. They are not equal. However, oh. if I do square, right? If I do square, correct? Yeah, the same. Then, then this square will be positive, right? So then we have 25 equals to 25 and we square it. Do you see that part? Uh. So See, that makes so much more sense with an example. Perfect. Yeah. Square, then only they are equal. So may, we are going to use this strategy a lot. 
Because if I have to say that these two absolute functions are intersecting, that means they have the same value. Mm -hmm. That does not mean A equals to B, right? That means A squared equals to B um, squared, and then you're going to solve it. Perfect. So yeah. with that, is this concept clear to you, Amy? Yes, now it's clear. <laughs> Perfect. So now uh, we can actually move forward very easily. Example number one, simplest of all the examples which you'll ever see in any book, okay? The first function here is absolute value of half x is less than or equal to four. The only complicated part here is half fraction, correct? But otherwise, yes. <laughs> you know, within the boundary of four, right? So it means yes. half of x is basically within minus four and plus four, both included. That's it. Mm -hmm. When you have to solve for x, multiply by two and you get your answer. Truly speaking, if you have to show the region, you could show as shown here. If you have to show the interval, then that be on the number line, but we just plot it on the x axis. Both the endpoints are included, right? And between minus eight and plus eight in this particular case. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Next one, two x is greater than, greater means away, beyond. That is what we're trying to specify. So beyond. And do not include the point this time, since we are talking about only greater than, right? So greater than means right. write down your two separate inequalities, one towards the left side, one towards the right side, 2x less than minus 6 and 2x greater than 6. Right. To get your answer, show it as required. Now, we have kept it very simple. In your exam, they will say, use this nomenclature to write down your solution, right? Maybe set interval form, set form, interval form, whatever form, or on a number line. Yeah. So whatever they say, you should follow that. Now, important thing here is we are, we are going to use the term within whenever we say less than or less than equal to and away when we are saying greater than, okay? Just for communication, easier communication. Mm -hmm. But thinking like this helps us to really get the solution right. Example two is uh, a similar kind, but this time what we have done is we have transformed the function a bit. So in this case, we have three minus X means we have translated the function. So, so basically three minus X is beyond two. That means we'll write two different inequalities. One saying that three minus X is less than minus two. The other one is greater than two. And then we are going to solve. Yeah. And when you solve, you get your equation uh, answer, which is X is less than one and X is greater than five. Another important thing here to note I mean, here is you could have solved with x minus three also the same thing, right? So you can try that on your homework sheet because I said three minus x absolute value, same as x minus three absolute value, correct? So you can use x minus oh, yeah, three yeah. and then solve, you'll get the same result. Away, right? So that shows very clearly yeah. going away, point not included. But when we are talking about within, so within a value means within plus and minus an inequality as equal to sign also. And then you solve and you get a similar answer as we got last time. The only thing is this time we have introduced you to the transformed absolute function. Now let's move on further. Understand what really happens when we compare it with some other constant value. So now in example three, we are involving constants. So as you can see, five minus absolute value of x plus three is greater than or equal to one. Amy, can you tell me what will be your strategy to solve this question? Um, so since that it says like minus of yeah. the absolute value of x, yeah. I would move that to the right hand side, Good but job. then switch the sign. Perfect. Uh, no. yeah. When you move this to the right hand side, you don't have to switch the sign because you move oh, okay. to the other side, so it became positive. That's a brilliant step because you don't have to worry about switching the sign now. <laughs> you get the point, <laughs> right? You get overwhelmed yeah. with switching the sign, so negative. That happens when we start with inequalities, you know, that's negative sign really bothers and it's there in our head. Well, we have to be clear. When you're just moving left to right, well, the negative automatically becomes positive. But when you're multiplying, okay. then you have to switch the sign. So you're not multiplying or dividing, you just translate it, correct? Right. That was perfect, mm -hmm. fine. So you'll move that to the right side and one to the left side, perfect? Right. And so you get your inequality, which is very simple to solve. And what you're trying to say here is,
that this particular function is within, is less than equal to, right? So yeah. when it is less than equal to, we just put it between plus and minus four, and then we get a straight solution, which is x is with, within minus seven and plus one. Now, you will observe <laughs> that most of the examples, what we do is we actually keep this to the left-hand side. You know, the function we normally keep on the left-hand side, normally. Yeah. So all of a sudden, when you look at that greater than or equal to sign, you might think about a way, but no, no, no. So that is why I'll again emphasize that try to keep it only on the left side so that, you know, we are always seeing the sign from the left side to the right side, which makes more sense and connectivity without doing, correct? So this is a good mm -hmm. approach, right? I will say good approach, but risky. Right, because now you know that if you multiply by negative or positive, you have to change the sign. So not that that's not a problem, correct? So keep right. it on yeah. the left side. Keep it on the left side. When you come to the solution, uh, and when you have to multiply by negative or positive, reverse the inequality sign because we are so used to looking at it, the function on the left side. Is that clear to you? Mm -hmm. so bring yeah. the function to the left side. Now, it is very clear in this case that it is less than seven. If you again right. look into these two equations, I'm not joking. If you again look into these two equations, what you first time notice is greater than or equal to sign there, right? Yeah. Over greater than or equal to sign. That may confuse you in examination hall. Actually speaking, the function is less than or equal to four, right? Yeah. Here but it looks like it would be the way. It looks the other way. Yeah. So at times that can make, because I've seen that mistake in some test papers. Yeah. I don't want, you know, knowing everything and losing five marks, not worth it, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Next example here is, uh, now we're trying to do the reverse. So now we are saying, express the inequality, which is given to us, minus six and 10 are the boundaries, both included for the X value. And we have to write the absolute function inequality, which is absolute value of x minus a less than or equal to b. That is your question. So, Amy, how mm. do you to do this question? Um, I do remember in the previous lesson, like mm. the last question we did, mm. we had to find like, um, what was it, the midpoint. midpoint and, then, yeah. and then we found the distance between the midpoint and like, we would Perfect. choose a positive endpoint. You're a great student, Emmy. So that is my favorite way of doing it. That is how I do it, right? But I'm at present calling this as my alternate method, right? <laughs> I prefer to do that way. Oh. So let me discuss that alternate method first, which you just now said. Absolute value means how much away are you from a midpoint? That is what it really means. So what you'll do is you'll find the midpoint of this minus 6 and 10. So when you work on it, minus 6 plus 10 divided by 2 is 2. So we got the midpoint 2. Now you move to the midpoint 2. That means your function is x minus 2. So we get our function x minus 2, clearly. Mm -hmm. Now, how much is the tolerance? That means from the midpoint, how far is your boundary? Which is 10 in this case. So we do 10 minus 2 and get 8. And there is the answer. Within 8 units. So absolutely right. x minus 8 less than equals to my eight is your answer. Not much calculations required. So that is the mm -hmm. method which, which I uh, expect my students to follow. But anyway, books do not normally use this method. <laughs> I haven't seen much of this, but what they use is also a very good method, which is we work the other way. That is to say, that the absolute value of x minus a is less than or within b, right? So you write your inequality, which is x minus a is within minus p and plus p. Okay. Now we can add a to all, and then we get a minus b on the one side and a plus p on the other side. So the value of x is between a minus p and a plus p. Uh right? Yes. Now we compare the inequalities, we have the limits that a minus b is minus 6 and a plus b is 10. When you're 2, you have simultaneous equation to solve, add and separate, get your answer. So when you add, you get 2a equals to, add them, 4 and a will be half of 4, which is 2. When you subtract, take positive first, then you get 2b is 16 and half of it is 8 and you get your answer 8 
And then you compare and you get your solution, which is x minus 2, absolute value, less than equals to 8. Perfect. Mm. Right? It's so, a nice method, just a little bit longer. Nice, clean method, easy to understand. Yeah. yeah, a little bit longer now when you understand the strategy, how to solve. So from here, you can go back to our original question, number line. You can just break it, right. center point, outside, and there we have the answer, right? That is how you can mm -hmm. easily solve, right? That's why I didn't solve that question. I knew you will do it. So <laughs> <laughs> next It's good to have both, though, to, like, verify, you know, yeah, in exam. Yeah. Use both. Like, your alternative one, you can use that to verify, like, the simultaneous one. Correct. You could do that. Yes. Perfectly fine. Uh, provided you have time. Because these are very simple one-one mark questions, right? So oh. you may not like to verify. We have to see you. Well, you know, what is the weight and what is the time requirement, correct? Now, yeah. next one here, Amy, can you read this question number five for me now? Mm -hmm. So um, example five, greater than inequality to absolute function. Mm -hmm. Express the inequality, x being less than minus seven, union x greater than five in the form of the absolute function of x minus a being greater than b. Got it. So how will you do it? Tell me. Okay. Um, oh, can I? Are we doing it the, your the alternative method? Your way. Your okay. alternate. Yeah, now you tell your me the alternate method. method. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So I'll just find the uh, uh, midpoint first. So minus seven <laughs> plus five is minus two. Yes. Divide by two is minus one. Correct. So we know be in the absolute function will be x plus one. Correct. And then uh, we would find uh, distance the distance <laughs> between the midpoint and endpoint, so it'll be five minus um, minus one, so that'll be add, so it'll be six. And since it's the greater than sign, which they're asking for, it'll be greater than six. Got it. Done. Is that it? That's oh, it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So easy, you, you just stick on with this method, don't worry. But you could do like this also. When it is greater than, that means that x minus a is either less than minus b or it is greater than b, and then you add b and you get compare your equations Assembled in equations are being solved to get your inequality. Perfect. Perfect. So that is what yeah. you could do for sure. Clear. So what I'm trying to write here is alternate method. Find midpoint M and the distance D from the midpoint. Simple as that. Right? Then absolute function is X minus M and sign whichever is given in the question greater than distance from the midpoint. That is the answer. So it is just two statements, very simple approach. Most complicated questions can be solved by this logical thinking. That's what I'm trying to, I want to All say. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Example six, Amy, can you read this example and solve? Yes. So um, example six, linear and absolute function. Solve two X being greater than the absolute value of X minus six. Correct. Now, what I did, Amy, here was, I want to emphasize on this part. So when you're working with any absolute function inequality, it is very simple to sketch this graph. It's just a V, right? So you need a couple mm -hmm. of points for sure. The vertex, one point on one side, another point on the other side. And these points could be one unit away from the vertex. You understand? So when you're trying to make a table, we have this function absolute value of x minus 6, correct? So clearly, mm -hmm. the vertex will be at 6. Do you see that? Vertex will be at x, 6. Because when I put 6, 0. You get 0. Simple as that. So that point is mm -hmm. at x equals to 6. So let me write, let me write vertex. 6, 0. Correct. Oh. 6, 0. Simple as that. Now, you got... You got this point six zero with you, perfect. You want one more point on either side, two more points. So obviously on one side, one more than six is seven and one less than six is five. Is that clear to you? Just put here yeah. five and five and get your point. And then you put one more, seven, and then connect. You get your V-shaped absolute function. Is that clear to you? Wait, so where did you sub the the terms again in the x minus in, 6 equation. Yeah, x minus 6 absolute, absolute value. value. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So when I write 5, 
5 minus 6 is minus 1, absolute value is plus 1. So I got this plus 1. Do you see that? And then when I say 7, again I get 1. So these are points horizontally placed for, for sure, right? Is that clear to you? Mm -hmm. So we have the vertex yeah. and the two points right there connect and extend. It doesn't take more than a second, but such a useful tip. So just sketch your graph first. Now, you got your absolute function right there. You have your line, which is also very easy to sketch. 2x means you know the slope and you know the, the origin from where it will go. Use that gradient of 2 in this case, sketch and you'll find that in this particular case, it is uh, striking at 1. Now, one particular point shown there. What are we saying? We are saying here that 2x, the line, should be greater than, means above the absolute function, correct? So we want that to be greater than, means this is the portion where the line is above the absolute function, that becomes our solution. So you visualize the solution first and then solve. Is that point clear? Uh, okay. Do you have any questions here? Um, yeah, just one thing. So um, if you didn't sketch the graph, is there a way of finding out the num like the points of intersection? Oh, and then brilliant. Brilliant. If you, you did not sketch the graph, is there a way to find the point of intersection? Well, mm. even if you don't sketch the graph, you have an idea of having, um, you have to think a bit more, right? That is all. Here you can visualize and see. We know that the line is on the left side of the, when we say about the, I mean, the absolute function, we define it with our vertex because it's moving away from that particular point, right? So comparing with the vertex, which is at six now, and this intercept is at zero, right? So zero is on the left side. Mm -hmm. So we know definitely yeah. that zero is on the left side line has got a positive gradient. Definitely it is going to hit my absolute function for sure. Your question here is, Will it be one point or two points, right? Or because 12, yeah. that is very interesting question because the line could have been with a lesser gradient. I could have a line like this. Do you understand? So that line yeah, and it hit two points. Point. So for that, mm -hmm. you have to check the gradient. Now, gradient of their absolute function is only one, and that of the line is two. Line is steeper, and therefore it is only mm -hmm. going to hit at one point. You get the idea. Oh, okay. okay. Only one point. Yeah. So, so yeah. if it's the same gradient. Yeah. Then only then, one point. Then also one point. Because same gradient will be that the line will be parallel, right? Oh, parallel. parallel. But it will hit yeah. there at least. It is going to hit this absolute function for sure. Uh, okay. Yes. And until it is parallel, but on the other side. Do you understand? Minus. Yes. Minus X. Okay. Minus X is not going to. That is the same slope. You get to my point, right? So, so it has to be better. one degree less. The yeah. gradient has to be one less yeah, if you want it to time. intersect twice. Parallel. Okay. Any less, any less. Because a gradient okay. less than one, as you are saying. Correct. Less than one. Because then the gradient is less, it is going to hit somewhere, right? For sure. Mm -hmm. so that is a good thing to also visualize when you are sketching, perfect. Even when you sketch part of the graph, you may not see the other points at times. So check the graph. Yeah. So let's make just, make a note of this. Good point, uh, Amy. So <clears throat> make Yeah, a just note. a quick thing. Yeah. Um, do you think that it's always better than to sketch? Because not only can you find out how many points of intersection, yeah. but you can find out whether, like let's say in this case, 2x is greater than, so you can see that it's above the see. other graph. Okay. okay, so always sketch. Always. So, so this hint is sketch graph to visualize the solution. I have kept it constant yeah. while copying my solutions. I do not want to remove it. Graph okay, yeah. while visualizing the solution. It is so important. And you will soon okay. realize that many absolute functions are so complicated that if you do not graph, it will take a lot of time to get to the solution. Graph makes things simple. You know where to work. That makes sense. Now, Yes. You're, now you know, Amy, that you have to work only on the left leg. Let me call this as the left leg yes. of absolute function. We don't have to be bothered no. about the right side. Do you see that? So yeah, yeah. we know that the absolute function is defined as a piecewise function like this. 
but we also now figure out that the solution lies on the negative side. I mean that left leg. So I will only right, solve yeah. for the left side and get my solution done. I'm not. And you know it's greater or... than two. Yes. Oh, you know it's greater than two because of the graph or because, yeah, because of the, of the sign. Graph. Well, it is my graph of the absolute function moving towards the left side, which was reflected okay. correctly is hitting mm -hmm. line. So I will use the value of my absolute function, which is when x is less than 6, because it is sitting on the left side. And therefore, yeah. I take the negative value of my absolute function and then equate it with 2x and get the solution. Is that Perfect. clear? Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So see, we have simplified our solution because we took time to sketch the graph. That yeah. is kind of critical. And not once. In all the examples, it will be so handy. Again, so the question here is again a linear and absolute function inequality, and the question is x greater than absolute value of three x minus six. Amy, now tell me how will you answer this question? Um, okay, so we can can we start by doing the sketch? Yes. So simply, if it was y equals x, that's just a straight line through the origin. Um, then y equals uh, 3x minus 6, like the absolute function. So we know the um, vertex is at 2. Oh. oh, yeah, I did a mistake here. 0. 2. Zero. two. Correct, 2. Because uh, I, I did a mistake. I copy it. This is this should be 3x minus 6, right? 3x minus 6. So basically, yeah. we have 3x minus 6. We are going to equate it to 0. So that means 3x is equal to 6 and x is equal to 6 by 3, which is 2. So the vertex is that 2, okay? So this vertex as shown here is that 2. Correct. And then, the function um, is so what's we skip? Yeah, and then when you sketch the um, line y equals x, you can see that it intersects at two points. Correct. So that means with the piecewise function, you use both the negative and the positive. Perfect. The gradient of the line is lesser than the gradient, which is for the absolute function, as we were discussing. Okay. And this so is going to hit at two points. So we have to solve both these sides, correct? So we worked on <coughs> left side of the absolute function and on the right side of the absolute function and equate them to six and get your answer. From the graph which you sketch, it is very clear that the line is above the absolute function within those two points of intersection and that becomes your solution. Clear? Mm, yeah. Right. Good. Example number eight. Now, what you see is two absolute functions, I mean, not a straight line, two absolute functions. Now, these two absolute functions, depending on their gradients, could intersect at one point, two point, like this. There are many combinations, correct? Now, mm -hmm. as you can see, the graph helps. X plus five is one, gradient is different than two, correct? That means they are going to intersect, right? So when you sketch, you can mm -hmm. see that only the right R of the left side function is crossing. Do you understand? Yeah. Only the right arm. So to solve your equation, we are now only bothered about x plus 5 right side. Because absolute function is a piecewise function. Uh, so we have two pieces. We have four scenarios. We have four scenarios because every function is like with dividing into two pieces, correct? Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Three but, yeah. But now, because we sketched, we know that only the positive side of x plus one is going to give us the point of intersection, and therefore, right. In our solution, what we have done is we have identified that there are two points P and Q where it is going to intersect, and to find these mm -hmm. two points, I'm only using the right side of my first absolute function and both the sides of the other absolute function. You see, mm -hmm. minus yeah. x plus one and two x plus one, and solving and getting both the points. That's it. Mm. So I just, I just love the way you've done it. So yes. clear, so easy to understand. Yeah. 
normally a student will do those two sides also and find nothing there what's the point in spending that time so make yeah. a good sketch be sure that the sketch is correct and follow it with your algebraic solution you got it right so p yeah. and q are my two points and the solution now once you get the intersection point remember what i was saying go back to the question read oh that red line should be above the green line okay now we know yeah. it is within that interval of intersection and then oh sorry <laughs> so we want the red line to be above the green line so this solution is also written wrongly oh so it should be minus two. yeah it oh, is within. Yeah. within it is within so you know uh, yeah that's what happens when you work all night right and you work <laughs> so hard <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, it's good. No, it's good to see because even like in exam, you can make a silly mistake like this. And Correct. It's so, so good to see how. See, I mean, so the trick works. That is, you only find the point of intersection. Now, once you have found the point of intersection, go back to your question. Because you, when you are solving, you forgot like where we yeah. started from. Go back to the question. Say, That's well, true. what is x plus five is my red line and should be greater than green line. This is how you have to say, right, to yourself. And then you say, well, that is this interval for sure, correct. So it should be within, and and then you corrected your answer. So that's a that's a good way of correcting your own. Yeah, answer. so good. Yeah, that is how you should do. So yeah, I'm sorry, uh, I've been working you know late nights to get all these things done. No, no. There are some typing errors and things like that, but I hope you get the concept. Okay. Yeah, yeah definitely. No, it's good to see. Like you said, because especially in exam, it's yeah. going to come like this. You might write something. Oh, that's why you're saying always go back and check and verify. Because yeah. I always never think that verifying is a big thing, but it is. So it is. do it. Oh, my God. Yes. Can't afford those mistakes. Now, again, mm -hmm. Amy, can you help me solve this question now? Mm. So um, example eight. So we're dealing with two absolute functions. Yes. So solve um, the absolute value of x minus 1 being less than the absolute value of 2x plus 5. Okay. okay. So we know there's a vertex. So let's start by sketching the graph. So with the um, x minus 1, we know there's a vertex at 1, 0. Yes. And then um, the 2x plus 5, there's a vertex at uh, minus 5 over 2, minus, yeah, minus 5 over 2, 0. Okay. Draw the two graphs. Yes. And... and what we need to say to ourselves is the x minus one graph needs to be um, below or like less than um, yeah. the two x plus five graph. So red has to be below, right? So since red has to be below, to be below. we are now looking into the boundaries which are going away, correct? Because red away, is below green uh, in those portions. Is that clear to you? Yeah. You find the point of intersection, red is below and that happens when you're going uh, away from the points of intersection and this time <laughs> this is correctly written right so uh, same okay. thing copied but this time it is correct okay <laughs> oh yeah and then yes. um yeah so like last time so we've got our um, x minus one graph and because it's the left leg um, of the thing we use the negative correct. of that the piecewise function yes and um, because it intersects at both the points, the positive and the negative of the 2x plus 5 graph, we use both the piecewise both, functions yes. and find the two values. Got it. I get it now, yes. Perfect. So if you think like this, absolute function inequalities become simple. Otherwise, involving two absolute function inequalities, it is very challenging, very challenging. Now you've got the point of intersections, you know the answer, plug it in, again check that you mean your red graph is less than green and those are the points going away from the points of intersection and therefore my solution is correct. Now you move forward. Is that clear to you? That's so good, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I just love how I get it now because it, <laughs> first glance, it looks really scary, like two yes. absolute functions, how am I supposed to do this? I can't even do one, but now it looks like so easy. Like yes. I just want to do them, <laughs> do questions. Great. So this time what Shame I Shame is not in my curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I introduce you some polynomials within the absolute function, right? So the polynomials okay. will go across this x-axis many times. Wherever they go below the x-axis, just 
reflect them above. That's the whole idea. Reflecting them above means you need to find the interval when they were below the x-axis, right? So those zeros or, or x-intercepts. And then you flip them. Mm -hmm. so you have to accordingly write down your piecewise function. So I've taken a simple example of parabola, you know, will only go once, right? It has only two points of intersection at the most. So there'll be one interval where it will go below. So that interval we have to see and then flip it uh, on that particular interval above the x-axis, correct? Now in this particular case, right. uh, what we see here is, hmm. so I should have written absolute value of two. Okay. First thing is four minus x square is within the absolute value. So rewrite this as x square minus four. Oh, okay. Is that clear to you? Yeah, yeah. Because it is within the absolute. So we are using this property of ours that it is an absolute value. So you could switch it the other way. So four minus Change x it. square is as good as x square minus four. So we begin with x square minus four itself. So I'll just draw the parabola here, continue with this point and then that becomes our graph of x squared minus four. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Well, the x intercepts at these two points, which happen to be at minus two and plus two, correct? Yeah, yeah. Right. I was just checking, yeah. Yes, so those are the two points where it has to be reflected. So these are the two points where we have to reflect it, correct? So when you reflect this, within that tolerance of two. And that's why I made this absolute value of two. I'm supposed to write this, uh, you have to flip it when it is between plus and minus two, right? So when it is between plus a modulus, uh, uh, nomenclature is very good, neat, right? So instead of writing, I could have written this as X, which is greater than or less than minus two and plus two, correct? Instead, I'm saying X is less than absolute value of two. Is that clear to you? So that is what yeah. I'm trying to say here in this particular part, okay? So if, when it is within this, then we are taking negative value. Is that clear? Negative of x squared yeah. minus four. But when it is beyond, then the graph remains same as shown in green here, perfect, no problem. So that is how you have to split your uh, polynomial function when it is within uh, absolute value, clear? Yeah. So parabola was simpler, as you can see, there was only one interval to flip. If you have a cubic equation mm -hmm. or something else, there may be more than one interval to flip. And so you'll have more branches of this, right? Different intervals. So do you always have to flip? Negative value. You always have to flip because it will be, it's in the negative area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You always flip. So, so in your case, most of the time, they'll only go up to the cubic function. So not a, no, I mean, but still you have to take care of all the negative parts in general. Is that clear? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. We are saying intersects both two. times. Yeah. Now we are saying intersects mm -hmm. two, right? Less than two. So draw a horizontal line, and this horizontal line is for me y equals to two. Y equals to two. It is striking at four places, as you can see very clearly. So all of these four places, mm -hmm. we have to figure out what is the solution. Okay. So the solution really lies when we are looking into line above the graph line above the graph means this portion right mm -hmm. graph dips below the line at that point correct and therefore that makes sense find yeah. the four points when we find these four points it is those little little intervals which are part of our solution Oh, okay. Is that clear to you? Yeah. So we wrote one part of the solution is from A to B, this interval, and the other part is from C to D, the other interval. Correct? Yeah. Right. So let's get back to this solution right from the very beginning. First step, sketch the graph. So when you sketch the parabola x squared minus four, it may be written as four minus mm. x squared, it doesn't matter. You can flip it, right? Okay. The standard way, which is x squared minus four. So sketch your blue graph here. And then since it is an absolute function, you have to flip the negative portion. 
vertical so, so when i flip it, it does that uh, is that point up there for then yes that point up there is for oh okay yes. yeah therefore you you mm -hmm. see this is your zero line right and two is midway all right yeah okay cool Sorry. Yeah. Carry on. The thing here is that that red line has become so bold that we can't see the blue axis. This is your x-axis. Yeah, I thought that was the axis. Yeah. yeah. So, so that makes a huge difference. Even even when I looked at it, uh, you know, while explaining, I found that yes. So you basically flip it, and now when you draw the line, you have to again go back to the equation and check the line above the graph. And you find that this little portions on the edges is the solution, correct? So once you find the point of intersection, you have to take those small points. So we made it a, a kind of a note that X should be within this A and B value or between this C and D value. That is our solution. So that is a strategy which you have to do while sketching so that you see the answer. Now okay, you move yeah. algebraically, correct? Just one yes. quick thing yes um how come you used the minus x squared minus four okay so piecewise function we flipped a portion of it and this is this portion let me now color it in a different color this portion is your negative part which we flipped so which is this portion do you see that and the negative part strikes at two places oh got it yeah, yeah. So, so first we are solving the negative part which was flipped so which is negative mm -hmm. x squared minus four equals to two. Clear? So when you solve this, yeah. bring negative, and then square root of uh, your solution, which is plus minus two. So you get two values, which is B and C values, interior side, right? So you get plus minus yeah. two as one solution. Now you look into the outside part, the original function, which was not flipped, which is the second half, right? So which is the second half, of your solution let me this portion so with that second half you again solve with two and you find the other two points which are the exterior points those are plus and minus yeah. six and you know square root so you know within square root of minus six and minus two and within square uh, root of two and six you have a solution so now you write down your solution as shown here clearly is that clear? Yeah, it's really clear. Got it. Complicated question, Amy. So not so simple. Mm. So you have to really think about it, right? So can you please read the note, whatever I've written here? Yeah. So for all the absolute function inequalities, it is important to sketch the graph and visualize the solution as we have done in these examples. Yeah. That's so right. helpful. Because without the graph, I don't know what I'm going to do. You cannot get this answer. I'm telling you, you will um, get lost. You will not understand like, what's yeah. happening. The four points involved. And imagine I'm only taking a parabola, right? If yeah. I make it a cubic function, you can imagine how many points you may get, right? So it becomes so right. complicated. Yeah. Right? Examination question is not so easy. If it is, they are giving you six marks, not for nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. I, <laughs> cubic equation. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, okay. so here is a cubic equation for you. So, Amy, can you please read the question for me? Yeah. So, example 10, two absolute functions. Solve um, the absolute value of 14 minus x cubed being less than 13. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, read the solution. Oh, okay. So, um, apply the fact that the absolute value of A minus B equals the absolute value of B minus A. Yeah, That's so they're interchangeable. Yes, so interchange. So we can say that it is um, the absolute value of X cubed minus 14 being less than 13. Correct. That makes it easier to sketch. Yeah. Uh, this function um, A, Q, and 14. Correct. Yeah. Now read mm -hmm. further. And then we find the piecewise um, of x cubed minus 14 yes. and we get it as um, the minus so the negative part being x minus of x cubed minus 14 would be x being less than the cube root of 14 Correct. and then the positive x cubed minus 14 would be x being greater than or equal to um, the cube root of 14. Correct. 
So, so cubic functions are simpler. When I've taken a very simple example, this time the function is only 14 minus x cube, right? So minus means reflected, 14 means translated up. So in that particular case, and when you can write it the other way, uh, we are making it mm -hmm. the other way. So we made, made it like this, right? So we, we kind of made it like this, correct? That point so being minus 14. Minus 14, correct? That's what we made within the absolute yeah. function. But you could go with any, you get the same solution, right? Because absolute mm -hmm. value will give you the positive value. Now look here. As we are looking at this particular graph here, what is happening? This is my x-intercept, which is shown here, right? And that is my, oh, sorry, that is y. And this is x-intercept, which is shown here. This is my x-intercept. Do you see that part? So this portion is negative. Since this portion is negative, I have to flip this. And this portion negative becomes at cube root of 14, right? If you have x cubed minus 14 equals to 0, then x cubed equals to 14, x is equal to cube oh, yeah. root of 14. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's cube root of 14, right? So somewhere uh, between less than, uh, because less than 4, uh, I mean, less, between 2 and 3, right? So because 2 cube is 8, 3 cube is 27, so it is between 2 and 3, as you can see, between 2 and 3, correct? So this mm -hmm. point yes. here is cube root of 14. And therefore, we have two different intervals. One, which is to the left side of cube root of 14, which is this portion. And that needs to be flipped, right? So that needs to be flipped. So this point actually goes there. And so we get this point like this. Do you see that part? Uh, got it. Yeah, 14. Mm -hmm. Is that clear to you, right? If I put x as 0, See, this equation, if I put x as 0, then becomes minus 14, right? So you think like this, y equals to 14 minus x cubed. So y equals to 14 for x equals to 0, correct? Yeah. So that is your, uh, uh, I mean, minus 14, right? Because I flipped it, I made it to the other side. You get the point, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so you get that part. So now we have a constant 13, which is a straight line. So if I'm drawing a straight line, you can see that the straight line will cut both two points of intersection, correct? So both positive and negative part is being cut by 13, correct? So you have to solve two equations. As you can see here, one point is on the right side and the other point is on the left side. Is that clear to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one with the negative sign of x cubed minus 14 equals to 13, I'm solving, getting my answer, which is x equals to 1. And the other one with the positive coefficient of x cubed minus 14, and I get 13 as my answer. Is that clear? Yes. Uh, yeah, 3 as my answer, right? So now, when I see this particular graph, I notice that I'm looking for the line to be greater, the red line above the, the graph. And the only portion where the red line is above the graph is within that particular interval of intersection. Right. And therefore, my solution is between 1 and 3. So that part has become my solution between 1 and 3. Is that clear to you? Yes. So that is how uh, we are going to solve absolute function in equivalence. I'll actually just end it here. And that should be good enough for you to sail through even year 13 on this <laughs> topic. So, I mean, how was yeah. it? Uh, I was super. I loved it. <laughs> what did you learn? Yeah, no, I was just really happy because uh, obviously I'm not that confident on absolute functions. But after this lesson, I definitely feel super confident. Now, obviously, I know it's not in my curriculum, but I can always still do questions that you would provide me for from year 13, just to see if I've actually grasped the concepts. Um, so what did I learn? Um, uh, let's, for starters, uh, the rules that you went through. Okay. So, um, okay. yeah, so the absolute value of X um, being, let's say, less than P means within um, P and minus P. And remember to check the signs. Uh, so if it says just less than, put the less than sign, not less than or equal to. Um, and then if it says greater than or greater than equal to, you know, it's a way um, uh, we, we use those terms so much easier to just get your head around. And then the very important concepts that are on the nice um, 
version on the table, uh, you use it. So when it says um, like the absolute value of minus X, absolute value is always the positive value. So you just take the positive value of X um, and then this key one, which I wasn't quite sure about, but now makes sense to me. Um, so the absolute value of A minus X, you can just interchange it and you yeah. can do the absolute value yes. of X minus A. Perfect. So that's very crucial because you like you saw. This is for polynomials. You saw those, those examples, yeah. very yeah. critical approach. It may look very, you know, trivial here, but when, you, when it yeah, comes yeah. to solving questions, it is one of the key things to do. Okay, continue please. Yeah. Um, yeah, because like you said, sir, with the, when we came towards the end, you know, the graph questions, um, if we did, let's say, 40 minus X cubed and made it um, upside down and done it, the whole thing would have been wrong because um, the absolute value means you can interchange it and then do it as a positive, like concave up kind of quadratic. No, it was a polynomial, but like you get the gist. <laughs> okay. And then um, the square root of X squared, do not write X. It okay. is the absolute value of X. So that's a key thing because, um, yeah, I've made the mistake <laughs> before. So, yeah, that completely makes the uh, changes the whole answer. So even though it looks like it's a small thing, it's very crucial. Um, and then, yeah, so then when we um, went through, we started with really simple questions just to get the gist of it and to understand um, a few concepts. Um, so simple things like this. Um, and then as you go, we went through the lecture, it got obviously more harder and harder. I think a very key point that I learned throughout was um, graphs, graphing. Um, oh my God, it is so important to graph because without it, it may make absolute functions really hard because just seeing it um, visually, you can find so many things from the graph. Like even though if it takes a little bit longer, just it, it won't take long because absolute functions are super easy to sketch. You just find the vertex, sub in points from the left of the point and the right of the vertex, and then just sub them in, literally draw two lines because it will always be a V. And then um, once you sketch it, you can easily see points of intersection and um, you can answer the question immediately if it says, uh, let's say one of the lines or graphs being greater than, so we can see what part is above the absolute function, what part is less than the absolute function, and you can easily find your answer, your solution, whether it's within or away. Correct. So I found that really helpful. That's so true. And uh, yeah. We are um, intersecting at two points, yes. Mm. So um, with the intersections, I did ask um, if you didn't sketch, but it's always good to sketch, but just saying if you didn't, how would you know how many points of intersection there would be? And uh, this was a very key point that you made was um, it's all about the gradient. So let's say you have like 5x and uh, you got another line being 2x. We would know there would be more than one point of intersection because the gradient, the other gradient is one or two less than the original, like the higher one. So we know there'll be more points of intersection. And obviously if the gradients are the same, they're parallel, so no point of intersection. Um, but yeah, I do recommend sketching because that's point the we, way to go. Yeah, we follow is, when you do the point of intersection, it is only the point of intersection. To write mm -hmm. the solution, go back to the question, read the question, greater than, less than, equal to, what is the condition? And then yeah. write down your answer. So you have the interval, but then before I do, mm -hmm. check what is really required. Like we did a mistake here. And if you do checking, you can correct your mistake. Yeah, that's so crucial, especially in exams. Yeah. How about these types of functions? Oh yeah, so the two absolute functions. Um, so it looks complicated for starters. Um, but it's actually not that bad as long as, yeah. So could you go back quickly? Yeah, this two, one. Um, yeah, this one. So, um, what you do is let's start by quickly sketching the absolute functions, simply find the vertex, sketch them. And, um, well, yeah, once you do that, you, so this is the quite important part. It's so easy from the diagram to visualize because sometimes I get confused, which, when do you use the, of the piecewise function? How do you know when to use the negative and the positive? So it's so simple. You look at the graph and from this one, we can see the red uh, line 
the left leg of the red line is intersecting at the two points on the green line. So we don't even need to bother about the positive of the red yeah. line because that's not being touched. So you take the negative of the piecewise function of yeah. the X minus one, that perfect. value. Perfect. It's that simple. Like don't complicate it. That so, is good. Yeah. Perfect. And yeah, you just need, um, otherwise there are two piecewise functions. See, like, like this, we have four right. functions. So we have four scenarios to work with. It becomes really complicated. Now you know exactly, you have to take the left side, that is negative part of one of the piecewise functions. Just keep it on the left side of both the yeah. legs. And then the other piecewise function, both the legs. And find your mm -hmm. That is so pretty. Because, yeah, because if you, if you use the other, the positive one, even yeah. if you just go through it, it's such okay. a waste of time because you're not going to get any result, are you? So sometimes what really happens is you don't get a result and then you think like, what went wrong? You may go checking for it. That's terrible. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how about the... Oh yeah, example nine. Hmm. Yeah, so this one, um, it, so this is the um, key important concept we learned at the beginning, how um, the absolute value of A minus B equals the absolute value of B minus A. So Perfect. this is where it comes into play, the interchangeable thing. So you can easily write the absolute value of 4 minus x squared as x squared minus 4. Um, and yeah, so when you write x squared minus 4, um, it would, when you do a simple quadratic, it would be x squared quadratic, obviously moved down 4. So that vertex would be at 4. But then because it will be at, sorry, I meant minus 4. So if that's at minus 4, we can't have the negative because we're taking the absolute value. So you have to flip that um, portion, which is negative, to the above the x-axis. So that would hit at four. And then you work from there. That's a crucial point because do not take the, the negative value. And then once you do that, when you, let's say it intersects now, we can see at four different points with the, um, because we flipped it, you have to take the negative of the piecewise of that for that um, function, and then you simply, um, yeah, find the points of intersection and then solve. Perfect. So, so I think you got all the gist of it. That's excellent, Emmy. With that, as you, you said, that beginning, you had some forty odd questions, except for one, you got all of them. Now I think you should try your grade thirteen book and see how many are there. And I'll also share with you some good questions based on absolute inequalities, right? Because this is right. an okay. important topic from a pre-calculus point of view. Uh, so before getting into calculus, we have to be very strong on absolute functions. As you can see that uh, most of the functions require this particular thing. And in calculus also, since we will be finding area and area is a positive thing, many times we like to flip the function itself uh, because uh, you know, we are looking into the positive values, correct? So right. yeah. you find great significance of what we have learned today. I hope you find it very interesting also. Uh, mm -hmm. You have understood all the concepts. Yeah, it was such a good lesson, sir. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Okay, then. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So we'll have a kind of mock test on this particular unit uh, next time. Uh, okay. Let's see you till then. All okay. right, cool. So, see you then, sir. Bye.